Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic is how to select funds for your retirement. Fund selection is a very important consideration when you're selecting your investment product. If you're new to investing and fund selection, it can be rather overwhelming considering all the decisions that you have to make. There's costs to consider, how to diversify your portfolio, how flexible is my choice, what underlying instruments can I choose from, and so on. So in today's webinar, we'll be sharing with you the various tools that PSG Wealth have available to help you in making these decisions and selecting the funds for your retirement savings. It was Benjamin Franklin who said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. When it comes to investing, nothing will pay off more than educating yourself. Do the necessary research, study and analysis before making any investment decisions. This is what we hope to achieve this afternoon, um, to provide you with enough information and tools to educate yourself and make informed investment decisions that will help you achieve your investment goals. To start us off, what products does today's topic apply to? The first one being a retirement annuity. If you're contributing a lump sum, to start off on our platform, our minimum investment is 20,000 Rand. Once you've met this requirement, you can add any amount at any time and even set up a debit order at a later stage if you wish to. We also have the debit order option where the minimum contribution amount is 500 Rand per month. And the same applies here. Once you've met the minimum requirement, you can make ad hoc contributions of any amount at any time. And you can also amend your debit order details at any time. With the PSG Wealth platform, we allow you to select any day of the month for us to debit your bank account. We will then debit on the first working day after the date that you have selected. The debit order option is obviously a good way to get into the routine of paying yourself first. Um, and the lump sum option is also very good for you to consider when you have those extra funds available, especially around bonus time. Second product that we're talking about is the preservation fund. This is the product that you'll consider when you need to preserve your retirement benefits, which originate from a pension or a provident fund. So typically, this will be the instance where you resign or perhaps you are retrenched. Um, in these cases, it's obviously very tempting to take that cash benefit instead of preserving the funds. However, this has tax implications and also it reduces your retirement savings quite significantly. Um, you're taking away the power of compounding growth on the funds from yourself. Um, as well here, the minimum contribution for our preservation funds also 20,000 Rand. At retirement age, which is 55 years and older, the retirement options for each of these products does differ. This is also something that you need to consider when you're deciding which product is appropriate for you and what your needs might be at retirement age. With these products, you're not forced to retire when you reach the age of 55. This is just the age at which you have the option to retire. So you can continue with these products um, up until 50, 55, 60 plus, uh, whenever you feel to, to retire. With the retirement annuity and the preservation pension fund, at retirement, you can take up to one third of the value as cash, and the balance must then be used to purchase an annuity. If the value, however, is less than 247,500, you have the option to take the full value in cash. With the Preservation Provident Fund, however, you have the option to take the full value as cash if you wish to. You're not forced to, but it is an option. You can either take a certain portion as cash and use the rest to purchase an annuity, or even use the full amount to purchase an annuity. So onto what we're trying to achieve today, what is Regulation 28 of the Pension Funds Act? Regulation 28 of the Pension Funds Act is the law which enforced limits on the investments of retirement funds. The intention of this act is to have more control and protect funds against making imprudent investments. The table that's displayed here reflects the limits which apply to each asset class. So, for example, the maximum amount of equity exposure you can have within your retirement annuity is 75% and so on as displayed in, in the table here for each asset allocation. So with the wise words of Benjamin Franklin in mind, I encourage you all to use the tools which are available to you in order to make an educated and informed decision for your future. 
For some investors, myself included, it can feel very overwhelming considering the number of options that you have, have available and at times even the overload of information. But you can empower yourself, remove some of that clutter by only looking at the right information for you. There are a number of tools that PSG Wealth offer you that allow you to make the decision process a lot simpler. And today I'm going to be showing you four of these tools. The first tool I'd like to show you is the PSG Wealth Fund List. Where do you find these tools that we're discussing today? On our website, which is the www.psg.co.za, towards the bottom of the page, you'll see that there is a support area. And under that support area, as I've highlighted here, there's the tools link and it takes you directly to the tools that we're going to be discussing. Once you've selected the product that you're interested in on our website, each of the product's web pages also has access to quick links. You'll see that towards the right hand side of your screen when you're on the product page. And this will also include the links to, to the tools that we will be discussing today. If ever you find that you're struggling to find any of the information or you're unsure which page the information that you need is lying on, we do have a live chat support function on our website to assist you. Um, and to direct you to the right links and pages on our website. This function is obviously only available during our office hours, which is 8 to 5, and you'll see that the little live chat support icon will appear towards the bottom right of the screen when you are on our website. This is what the fund list that you download will look like. This lists all of the funds which are available on our platform for you to invest in. There is a column on the fund list, which indicates to you whether the fund is Regulation 28 compliant or with a tick or a cross. So that's indicated over here with a tick or a cross. This column can just be used as a guideline as to which funds are compliant to Regulation 28 or not. We still allow you, however, to create your own portfolio, so you're not restricted to only the funds that are indicated with a tick. If after doing all of your research, you now decide that you'd like to register for a retirement annuity to perhaps invest a thousand rand per month in the PSG balanced fund, for example, this allocation will be compliant to the limitations stipulated in Regulation 28 as indicated on our fund list by the little tick in the Regulation 28 compliant column. Our fund list also indicates the fees for you towards the top of the, of the page. The platform administration fees for our PSG funds is 0.2% per annum and all our other funds available on the platform for the first 1.5 million will be charged 0.5% and then that slides down after 1.5 million down to 0.2. It's obviously excluding that inclusive will be the 0.228 as indicated on the screen. Another tool that we have available on our website is the Regulation 28 Calculator. This tool is in an Excel format. We will notice there's an input sheet and a results sheet. You will use this tool when you're looking at investing in multiple funds within your retirement annuity or preservation fund. So for example, if you want to diversify your portfolio and invest in two, three, or even more unit trust funds, you'll use this tool. There's a drop down list on the left hand side that you see here that you'll select the fund from. You'll complete then the corresponding percentage allocation that you want to allocate in your portfolio to that fund, and then you'll do so until your allocation sums up to 100%. Remember, again, I want to stress, you can select any and as many available unit trust funds as you like, as long as the overall asset allocation is compliant to the Regulation 28 limits. Let's have a look at a practical example. Compare the two tools that we've had a look at so far. For example, I've chosen now to invest in the PSG Balanced Fund. On the input sheet of the Regulation 28 calculator, I select it from the drop-down and allocate 100% uh, to this fund that I've chosen. Having, look, having a look at the fund list, we can see that it is indicated by the little tick that it is compliant. So when I'm moving over to the results sheet of my Reg 28 calculator, I am expecting a positive result.
As you can see over here, the calculator does in fact correspond with the indicator we saw on the fund list. So the Regulation 28 tool also shows you in the bottom table here the maximum limits and the underlying allocation of the fund that you have chosen. So in this example, we can see all the underlying allocations are within the maximum limits as the result shows as, as Reg 28 compliant. So And also our little result shows there in the red as indicating as yes. Let's do another example where we select multiple funds. You'd follow now exactly the same process um, on the input sheet, select the funds from the drop down, complete the corresponding percentage allocations that you're interested in. In this case, I've chosen an allocation of 50% in the PSG balanced fund and 50% in the PSG flexible fund. Again, comparing the two tools we've looked at so far, the fund list displayed here at the bottom, you'll see the PSG balanced fund is indicated as compliant. However, the PSG flexible is indicated as not compliant. So here it's going to be important for us to have a look at the result sheets of the calculator to determine if the combined underlying allocation I've selected is within the stipulated limits. On the result sheet, we can see the combined underlying allocation I've selected is in fact compliant for this example. So this is now just to demonstrate to you that you can select any available unit trust as long as the overall allocation is Reg 28 compliant. The table below again will show you what your underlying asset allocation is. So you can use the results sheet as an indicator to change either your fund selection or percentage allocation or even both so that you can maximize on, on the asset allocations. For this example, we can see the underlying allocation for my choice of funds results in 66.9% equity exposure. So if I, for example, would like to have the maximum exposure to equity as possible, which is 75%, I'll need to change my percentage allocation on the input sheet until I get to the underlying allocation that I want for that specific asset class. If, on the other hand, the allocation you have chosen is not compliant, the result sheet will indicate a little no in the, in the top over there indicated by the red circle. And the table below that will then show you exactly which asset class your allocation is exceeding. For this result, I've selected a 100% allocation to the PSG equity fund. We know now the maximum allocation allowed for the equity exposure asset class is 75%. But in selecting 100% allocation to the PSG equity fund, we can see we've exceeded this limit in the results table since the total underlying equity exposure for this fund is up to 97.2%. Again, these examples are just to illustrate to you that you can manipulate the percentage allocations and fund selection to create your own portfolio that suits your risk profile and that allows you to maximize on the asset class limitations all while making sure that you comply with the regulation. The third tool we'll be looking at today is the Funds A to Z, which is also available under the Tools section of our website. This tool provides you with up-to-date price and performance data of more than 400 funds. The Funds A to Z allows you to compare unit trusts and portfolios in terms of their categories, such as equity, real estate, interest-bearing, or even based on geographic location as well as the benchmarks, the fees, the performance, and the risk measures. So if you are looking for specific funds, you can use the search bar, or if you want a view of all the funds, you can download the Mega Fund Fact Sheet, which reflects all the data in an Excel format. And from there, you'll be able to, to add in the filters that you like or to, to accommodate for, for your needs. The Funds A to Z is a very useful tool to compare the funds that you're considering on investing in and com can compare up to five funds on a single page, which helps in creating one view for you to easily compare funds and get one big picture. If you look at the direct comparison, you're able to get a better idea of whether the funds you are comparing are in line with your investment goals and risk profile. As an example, in the search box under the Funds A to Z, I entered in PSG. Once I clicked on the search button, all the PSG funds then appeared for me to compare. 
these little tick boxes that are indicated on the right hand side that you then select which funds are you wanting to compare scroll right down to the bottom and you simply click on the compare button the breakdown then uh, reflects for you the performance of the funds that you selected side by side also shows you the risk measures of each of the funds as well as the fees for each of those funds the side by side view I find is easier um, it's an easier view compared to having to download each individual fund fact sheet of each fund you can still download them individually. We do have this functionality available, but you might find this tool a little bit easier in, in having them right next to each other to, to compare. Since the fees related to a product and the funds you select are so important to consider, I'd like to look at one more tool this afternoon. Some of you might have already started hearing the term EAC in the industry recently. What is EAC? The Effective Annual Cost Measure, or EAC for short, has been implemented within the industry to standardize the way fees are disclosed to allow for more transparent and consistent reporting. The EAC methodology allows you to compare charges and their impact on your investment returns. So this is just another tool which places you in a position to make better informed decisions. EAC is made up of four components. The Investment Management Charge, is the total expense ratio and transactional costs of the underlying financial product. The advice fees will only be applicable if you engage with an advisor. So if you are not using an advisor, this fee will then be zero. Or if you are using an advisor, it will be the fee which you negotiate with that advisor. The administration costs relate to the administration of the project of the product, which may include the ongoing administration charges, the fees for the processing of your instructions or communicating with you, sending your statements on a frequent basis and so on. And the final component indicated as other may include costs such as a termination cost or some penalties which might relate to the product. So the ESC calculator is the, the final tool we're looking at this afternoon, and it's available on our website on the same page that you'd find the Regulation 28 calculator and the funds A to Z. So all of our tools are on the same space. This is what the calculator would look like. So all you'd need to do is complete the fields. So are you a direct investor or are you dealing with a financial advisor? What instruction type am I looking at? Is it a lump sum? Is it a recurring contribution? Or perhaps a combination of the both? Which product am I interested in? My date of birth? How much am I looking at investing? Finally, which funds? And what is my allocation to that fund? So once you've entered in all these values, you'll click on the the output and it will generate for you a table so let's look at an exa practical example and that we see what the tool looks like let's say i'm interested in a retirement annuity based on the example that we mentioned earlier retirement annuity of say 1000 rand per month invested in the psg balance fund since in our previous example we did see that it is compliant so we know we won't have a problem there with our fund allocation I've now entered in all of the details on the calculator. I'm a direct investor with a recurring instruction and a retirement annuity of 1,000 Rand. I've entered in my date of birth. I've entered in when I would like the recurring premium to commence. And I've indicated an allocation of 100% to the PSG Balanced Fund. So once I've completed all my fields, I'll just click on the calculate and it will generate an output for me which reflects each component broken down from the EAC, which is a summary for the one, three, five year and the term to maturity, which for this example, retirement annuity will be the retirement age of 55. And in my example, the administration charges you'll see is the cost that relates to the administration of the actual product. So this includes the process and governance charges for the PSG Wealth Retirement Annuity product. Processing and governance fee charged is a special levy, which is authorized by the trustees of the fund. Currently, for the PSG Wealth Retirement Annuity product, 
This is 60 Rand per year or 5 Rand per month and 216 Rand or 18 Rand per month for our preservation fund. Just to summarize a few things before we have a look at the questions, just remember, use the tools together, hand in hand, and adjust them to suit your needs. In terms of the performance of the funds, past performance does not indicate future performance. I'm sure you've all heard that before. And the examples that I've used this afternoon are purely illustrative and not aimed to give you advice. PSG Wealth is offering you multiple tools in different formats that empower you to make better investment decisions for your future which will hopefully give you something to look forward to when you retire. So invest in your knowledge so that you can make your investment decisions with confidence. Let's have a look if there's any questions. Ludovic, uh, you've asked us, can you transfer your Alan Gray retirement annuity or any other retirement annuity to our platform? Yes, you can. For sure. Um, I will also bring up my details here. I'm, I'm happy to send you through the forms and the requirements that are needed for that. It will follow a section 14 process, which I'm happy to explain to you further as well. But in short, Ludovic, yes, you can transfer that. Same, same question. Will there be costs? Will there be costs for your transfer from Allen Gray to, to the PSG platform? We, were, we don't charge any take-on costs, but you might need to just find out from your current provider, which in this instance you've mentioned is Alan Gray. You might just need to find out from their side, do they charge any costs? But in taking on your business, we don't charge any, any costs there. Thank you. Name is Okay. Neil, you interested in a living annuity for PSG? I'm assuming you might be um, close to retirement age there. I'm also happy to, to chat to you about that product. I'll, I'll send you my details as well. Um, make sure we, we get you involved in that product, what it all entails and how it works, but we definitely have that offering on our platform as well. Uh, Mike? Uh, I, the reason why I didn't cover living annuities is because it does not need to comply with Regulation 28. So the only um, products that we have on our platform that will need to comply with Reg 28 is our retirement annuity and our preservation funds. So for a living annuity, you don't need to comply to these restrictions and these asset class allocations. You can select any of the funds on our platform. Just tell them we'll get back to you by email. So for, for the rest of you, obviously due to time constraints, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of these details from Sean, from Sean along with all of your questions, and I'll make sure that I contact each one of you with a little bit more detail um, on the questions that you've raised. So for those of you that have joined this afternoon, thank you very, very much. Um, if there's any further questions or any feedback or any suggestions, um, here are my details. Um, I'm happy to, to assist you guys with any of the questions that you might have and obviously the questions that I didn't get time to answering now. Thank you very, very much for, for attending our webinar this afternoon.